Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my Ferrero or Raffaello Trio handbag. So inside, as you can see, there is some beautiful Ferrero Rocher chocolates. Or you can add these beautiful white ones, the Raffaellos. Um, and I've just created this cute little handbag that I think is really lovely and is so easy to make. Um, this beautiful pattern here is a die cut and I, I've i sort of found a new love if you like for my um, products out of the um, annual catalogue because I think we're all so torn with the new beautiful stuff in the new catalogues that we sometimes forget we have beautiful stuff in our annual catalogues too and so fiddling with bows look at me can't even do it now um, so yeah, so I wanted to go back and I have used some of the new products because this is from the Sweet Treats. Um, but this is the beautiful, I never remember the name, Delicate Lace Edgelets. And this is the Garden Impressions DSP. Um, and it's a really simple box, but I say quite pretty um, little handbag to make up. So I'm going to show you how I made it. And like I said, it is the simplest thing ever. So you will need a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by seven and three quarters, which is 22 by 20 centimeters. So on the shorter side, so I just need to check that this is the shorter side. We will need to score at one and a half and six and a quarter. And then we need to rotate and score on the longer side at three and a half and five inches. So short side, one and a half, six and a quarter, which in centimetres is four and sixteen. And on the long side, we need to score at three and a half and five, which is nine and thirteen centimetres. Okay, move that out of the way. <clears throat> fold and burnish our score lines <clears throat> and I'm using so saffron here which again is such a lovely delicate soft colour ideal for spring as well so simple little cut there and then what we're going to do is cut down these long panels here to that first score line but then we're actually going to cut them halfway because we're going to need to use these as uh, tabs. Okay so I'll do the same on the opposite side and we'll do it on all of the four long pieces so we cut all the way down to that first score line but we'll just simply cut it in half or thereabouts and create our tabs. Okay so all four Oh, nearly, 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 <laughs> nearly cut it on the line then. So just cut those wedges and then the same with this side, cut all the way down and then halfway across that one, creating those wedges. So we'll get rid of that bit of rubbish <clears throat> and that's what we're left with. And then we're quite simply going to add adhesive onto these bits and fold it up. Now again, as you may have guessed, I've left my uh, wet glue elsewhere because I'm still on my swaps. Now I actually do all of my filming on one day. So the only thing that gives it away is probably the colour of my nail varnish. You can tell when I'm doing a different video because <laughs> I'll have a different colour. Because at the moment, I've because it's still quite cold, I'm just wearing this top all the time when I do my videos. Um, so yeah, so you can't tell now when I'm if I videoed five in one day or one. Um, as I say, the only way you'd be able to tell now is from my nail polish colour, and this one is a lovely a lilac colour today. So yes, next time it may be a different colour. Although I still have two more to do, so you might be seeing lilac for a few more days yet. <laughs> okay, so 
some tear and tape on all of our tabs and then we're simply just going to make this up into our handbag. Just take the backings off. So we fold this side up. <coughs> and this one too. And then just fold this one up <coughs> into here. So it's a nice simple shape. And there's your basic handbag. So I'm going to bring in my, should have probably done this first, but never mind. Bring in my corner rounder and just trim off. Or should I say just round those corners. So yes, I probably should have done this first, but I forgot. I always forget. I'm terrible. But at least this will fit nicely inside, so there we go. So that's that part done. Then we need to create our little handle, if you like. So you can use your ovals if you wanted to layer ovals or if you had your oval punch. I just went with a quick and easy and my three quarter circle punch. And all you need to do on this one is use either your grid paper or a ruler. And I just kind of eyeballed where my circle needs to go. Um, as for depth, I don't know if you can see, there's like a square around the stamping up symbol. And I've lined mine up with the top line there. So that's that one, and then I'll do exactly the same on the other side. So I'm just sort of lining up, putting a little pencil mark, and then again, line up with that line on my punch. <coughs> and they should line up together. So that's the, the basic part. Let's pop my chocolates inside. Give it a little twist so it sits straight. It doesn't want to sit straight. We'll leave it like that then. So there's my chocolates inside. Pop that to one side because I want to decorate the outside. So I've done all, one already to save time. Um, but as I say, I've got my delicate lace edgelets here. And I've just simply used this one. So obviously if you want to make a bigger one or a different one, you could use any of these really. And I'm using Melon Mambo here to go with this DSP this time. So my cardstock for the panel will be four and three quarters, which is the width of your bag by two inches. So mine is 12 by five centimetres. Bring in my big shot. <coughs> I don't need that one. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So I'm gonna bring in my precision base plate because I want a nice clean cut. And then I'm simply going to line this up across the bottom, make sure it's straight. And I've lined it up across the bottom and I've also lined it up, if you can see, down in between the points there. Just makes it a neater finish on the bag. And then, it doesn't look straight to me but I know it is. And then I'm just going to cut this through. And take this out. Get rid of my big shot for a minute. And then I've actually got my die brush because this is going to be so fiddly to take all of those bits out. So that comes out nice and clean. And then I'm just going to run across here, making sure all those bits are out. And there's a the few left in that 
just won't play the game but it's so much easier and quicker to use that dye brush than it is to use your piercer for everything so let's get um as you know I'm one for mess I have to clear it up instantly so that's that done so I now have two panels and then I have my beautiful DSP which is four and three quarters by one and three eighths and then I'm just simply going to stick it on here and I'm just going to line it up with the top of my cardstock. And likewise with this one. It's so pretty that. Same again on this one. Again lining it up with the edges and the top. And then this simply gets adhered onto my bag. So again, just pick the sides, decide on how low, high you want it. Spin it round, same on the back. <coughs> and again, just remembering how far you had it underneath the handle. You want a similar distance on this one so that they look the same. So there's my pretty, pretty bag and you could always add a trim on the side if you wanted to. Um, I've used some of the beautiful polka dot tulle ribbon. Um, this one's Whisper White. I actually used very vanilla on this one. Not that you could tell, but it is quite pretty. Quite delicate, so just feed that through. <clears throat> Tie my bow. And I didn't pull this too tight either because I didn't want to um, affect the shape of the bag too much. Let's decide. Right, so this is going to be the front then. <laughs> just because it looks prettier and that's the way the bow fell I'll just trim that and trim that at more of an angle a bit tidier finish and then I just need to do my <coughs> decoration so as I say I'm using Sweetest Thing so I have this beautiful um, frame here and then I'm going with sweets for you as a little stamp and then I want which I didn't get oops ready melon mambo and so saffron inks so I think I'm gonna go oh, which way round which way round okay melon mambo for the frame I think and just remember, I did this the first time and I didn't notice. There's a point at the bottom of this one and that's round. And the first time I did it, I did it that way. Um, it looks a bit silly. So just make sure if you are doing this one that you keep your um, point to the bottom if you're adding words. Don't make the mistake I did. <laughs> so saffron for my sweets for you because I think that's just perfect. Not very straight either, not very good. So that's that one. And then I use my jar of sweets framelits for by cutting this bit out. So back in with my big shot, but obviously I don't need that this time. I just need my normal magnetic platform, which I'm going to pop on there. Obviously your die has the little point at the bottom too. Just line it up and run it through. Just to get out of the way, let's move that. 
and then I have my lovely die cut element there. I'm just going to pop some dimensionals on the back just like that and then I simply used the beautiful basic adhesive backed sequins to just add a few more little details too. So what colour shall I go with for this one? Oh, not sure. I think we'll go with the shiny ones, the iridescent ones. So I'm just going to pop one there and a couple over here. Oh, if I can get them off. And there we have it. Our beautiful little Ferrero Raffaello handbags. Hope you like them. Hope it gives you something to make for loved ones for Easter maybe or just as a little treat or you could even use them as table favours to be fair. Hope you like it. Hope it wants, makes you want to go and get your older pr products from the annual catalogue out and uh, have a little play with them again. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.